Hi, and welcome to the fifth video in our file monitor series. So I know that in the last video, I said that we would go full GUI in this next video, but I actually have one more thing that I just want to show you guys because I've gotten a few questions on some comments on some other videos to how to create a file dialogue with your scripts. So I figured instead of going full GUI right away, I would actually implement a file dialogue into our file monitor script in our just our console application. So that's what we're going to be doing on this video. We're going to be taking the exact same script that we've have built over the last few videos. Uh, so we have our file monitor script with our full menu that helps us set a baseline, add a path to the baseline, uh, check files against the baseline, uh, and then also have the email and also create a new baseline. So instead of all of these read hosts, what we're actually going to have is going to have a file dialog that will let the user be able to pick a file. And what's nice with the file uh, dialogs is we can actually implement some filters in there to actually specify that they could only pick CSV files. So it automatically also does a lot of this testing for us. Now, of course, I would always recommend to leave these in here just to add that a little bit of extra security into your program. This way, if someone for some reason manages to file, uh, to select a file that's not CSV, even though we set that filter in place, uh, that you have something to catch that error. So let's actually go ahead and let's start off by just copying our file here and creating a new file for this video. And let me just rename this video five. Uh, we're going to just put a little bit more obvious here, file five, uh, video five, file dialog. And we are actually going to get started here. So what we are going to first need to do is at the top of our script here is actually add a, t add a assembly for us to be able to use these um, file dialogs. So what we're going to want to do at the top here is add dash type. And we're going to pass in an assembly name and the assembly name that we're going to pass in is going to be system dot windows dot forms. And then if you actually just run this here, you should not get an error. It should just load in properly. And then you know that you are good to go. So the first thing that we really want to do is of course, go down into our kind of our console application, because that's where we're doing where we're asking the user to input some different items here. And the first one is selecting a baseline. So what we're going to do here actually is just remove this line altogether. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a input file pick. And let me actually just uh, lowercase the I here. So input file pick. So that's just short for uh, input file picker here. And we're going to set that to a new object. And the new object that we're going to be creating is going to be system dot windows dot forms dot open file dialog. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the input file pick. Now here you can actually uh, do quite a bit. So what we're going to do here first off is I'm just going to do a show dialog open and close parentheses. And then right after that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a baseline file path is going to be equal to input file pick dot file name. All right, so we're just going to try it on the first option. Now I know that we still have uh, some other ones to do, which are going to be a little bit different than this one, but I just want to show you guys how this kind of works out. So let's go ahead, let's highlight our code and let's go ahead and let's run it here. So here we have our options. So let's go ahead and let's enter one. Now you're going to notice, especially if you're using Visual Studio Code, it's going to seem like it's actually hung. And if we actually just move Visual Studio Code here a little bit, here is our open file dialog here. And I can actually select the baselines file here. But notice how I can actually see PowerShell scripts. I can see XML documents. There is no filter on here by default. So let's just go ahead. Let's pick baselines. And there it is. The current baseline is set is actually properly set here. 
So it does actually work. Um, so our open file dialog actually works. So let's actually just quit out of here and we're going to make it a little bit better by applying a filter. So we're going to do an input file pick dot filter. And when we have the filter, we're going to make that equal. And now we're going to put a set of double quotes here. And we're going to put CSV in all uppercase space, open and close parentheses, star dot CSV. And then after the close parentheses, we're going to do another space and we're going to do a vertical slash or a pipe. And then we're just going to do a star dot CSV. And now if we actually go ahead and we run this code again, go ahead and hit one, and we just go open this. Notice how now the only files that are shown, we actually have a file filter, and that is the only file filter you can actually pick. Um, so it really prevents you from being able to pick other types of files. And here we can actually pick the baseline two, and we can see that the baseline two is actually set up here. So everything is working correctly here for the set baseline file. So now the only other thing that we need to do now is if we keep scrolling down to the, there it is, the target file path. So this is adding a path to our file. Now remember that we can actually monitor any kind of file. So you're not gonna wanna put any um, real filtering on this one here. So what we're just going to do is we are gonna do a star and we're just gonna do the input file pick once again. We're going to make it equal to a new object. Once again, just a system dot windows dot forms dot open file dialog. And since we don't need a filter, we can just go ahead and put file pick show dialog open and close parentheses. And then we're going to do a target file path equals input file pick dot file name. And there it is. So actually, if we go ahead and we're just going to test this one out now. So if we look at our baseline two here, we don't have anything in baseline two. So let's go ahead and let's add some files into baseline two. So let's go ahead. Let's run that here. And let's do number. Uh, first, we'll have to set the baseline. So let's go ahead and let's pick baseline two. And then let's, so we can actually see our baseline two here. And now if we actually do the option two, let's go ahead and let's add test one here. And we see entry successfully added into the baseline. If we look in our baselines two.csv, we actually have that file that got added in. We can actually add another one here. We add test three, there's test three. We saw it add it live there. So everything is working great for this option. Now our last one is the create a new baseline. Now this is actually where it's going to be a little different. So in the last two, we were using open file dialogs. Now let's actually try to see if it would work if we just tried to use the exact same thing. So let's do an input file pick equals new, oh, let me just uh, quit out of the script here so we can actually get some IntelliSense. So new object system dot windows dot forms dot open file dialog. Now, of course, what we want to do as well is only have CSV files because we only want to really have a CSV file. So let's once again do an input file pick dot filter equals and we can just go ahead and come all the way up here copy this little string here that we have paste that in here and then let's do an input file pick and let's do a show dialog open and close parentheses and we're going to do a new baseline file path equals the input file pick dot file name. So now let's actually see if this works. So if we actually go ahead, we run this code, let's go ahead, let's create a new baseline. 
try to move this to the side here. Now we see all of our files and if we try to do new baseline dot CSV and we do open, we get file not found. So we actually cannot create a new file this way. What we'll actually have to do, let's make this bigger here and let's just quit out of here. What we actually need to do instead of a open file dialog, what we need to do is a dot save file dialog. We can keep our filter and keep everything else the exact same here. So if we actually go ahead and we run this and let's create five. So let's uh, create a baseline. So as you can already tell, we already have baselines, baselines one, baselines two. So let's create baselines three. We don't even have to put a .csv here. All we need to do now is hit save. There is our baselines CSV. It's already got the path and the hash in there. So now all we need to do is set the baseline. And let's go ahead, let's set it to baseline three. And now let's add a path to it. And let's add test one. Now, if we go ahead and we look at our baselines three, we created this new file, we added a file into it, and the user didn't have to type in anything in terms of file paths. So it is very, very easy to implement some file dialogues without making a whole GUI application. You don't have to make a full GUI application in order to use the open file dialogue or the save file dialogue. You can actually fully code those in your console applications or your scripts already that only run in a PowerShell console or terminal and it'll work perfectly fine the user will be able to use them. Uh, just please know if they do use Visual Studio Code, um, it sometimes will appear behind the screen. Uh, so just be aware of that. You won't see anything flashing at the bottom. So that is a little bit of a downside, but if they are just running the scripts, I believe in a PowerShell console, it should pop up pretty much right beside it or right behind it. And usually that window isn't full screen. Mine, unfortunately, because we're recording this video, my Visual Studio is in full screen, so it's a little bit harder to see. Uh, but that is one little gotcha about this to keep in mind. Uh, but besides that, that is how you can add a open or save file dialog to your scripts. If you guys have any comments or questions on this, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer every single one of you directly. And if it's something um, that you guys want to see that a lot of people can benefit from similarly to this uh, feature that I've seen quite a few people ask for now. Um, I do eventually throw it in one of these videos that just kind of fit in properly. Uh, so now in the next few videos, we're actually going to be making a full GUI for our file monitor um, script as well. So it will obviously have the open and save file di dialog, but also the whole menu will be a GUI. So we'll have a window to fully be able to manipulate this file monitor. If you guys want to see anything else added in, please let me know as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.